Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Myself, Zakari Ahmed, field assistant by Techup Bahana College. I am your moderator for today, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all here to the online lecture on entrepreneurship. Two, organized by DVD funded institutional biotech hub Bahana College, Jorhat. This lecture program will be inaugurated by our honorable principal of Bahana College, Dr. Sumbit Chalia, sir. I'd like to invite sir to uh, deliver the speech. Good afternoon to one and all present here. It gives me immense pleasure in welcoming all of you to the online talk on entrepreneurship organized by Institutional Biotech Hub of Bahana College. On behalf of Bahana College, I welcome all of you. I want to convey my heartful gratitude to Dr. Zisan Ahmed speaker of this special online talk. I would also like to express my sincere thanks to all the participants from various parts of the country who sincerely committed to this event to make it a success. Institutional Biotech Hub of Bahana College organizes a series of online lectures on entrepreneurship. This lecture is second one. Today's topic Bamboo tissue culture from lab to landscape uh, is a very relevant one, especially for the northeastern part of the India. The environment of Assam is suitable for bamboo cultivation and it has the largest forest cover of bamboo in the country. Cultivation of bamboo scientifically will grow green business and it has potentiality for entrepreneurship. I am sure that the talk will be profitable and fruitful for everyone present here. I welcome you all once again to the event and hope that you all will enjoy the talk. Thank you all. Thank you so much, sir, for, your, uh, for innovating our today's online lecture. Now I request our coordinator of Biotech Hub Dr. Sangeeta Das, ma'am, to say a few words. And today's lecture, it is the second lecture program on uh, tissue culture. I hope all your questions, queries regarding plant tissue culture, uh, especially about bamboo, how it is to be done, and uh, what is it, and uh, most importantly, uh, why we should do tissue culture, why we should go for plant tissue culture. So with this hope, I welcome each one of you into this uh, online uh, lecture program. And uh, with this, I conclude my speech here. Thank you so much. Over to the guy. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request Dr. Rafiul Amin Laskar, assistant, uh, assistant professor of botany, uh, PDUAM Iragul uh, Karimgans, uh, to introduce our research person of uh, today's program. Yes. So, <coughs> thank you, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. 
डॉक्टर प्रिंसिपल सर डॉक्टर कुंभित सलिया सर सिस्टम कोऑर्डिनेट पार्टी हाफ संगीता मैम फैकल्टी मेंबर एंड डियर फ्रेंड्स ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स हु आर हु जॉइंट आवर पार्टिसिपेंट्स सो ए वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन इट इज माय डिस्टिंक्ट प्लेजर हियर टू इंट्रोड्यूस आवर स्टीम गेस्ट स्पीकर फॉर टुडेस ऑनलाइन लेक्चर ऑन एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप डॉक्टर जिशाना and and an assistant professor at Bamboo Research Institute, Nanjung University, Nanjung, China. So, Dr. Ishan Ahmed, uh, and I stay still born because uh, studied together in Aligarh Muslim University, which did our BSc, MSc, PhD, everything. So, all of our works actually now is plant tissue culture, basically. I was in genetics at that time. So, uh, although I am not very good at this role, uh, but uh, I thank ma'am for giving this opportunity. Actually, uh, this is not just a uh, professional honor, I would say, but a personal joy to introduce a very dear friend of mine uh, in, on, in front of you all, uh, whose actually achievements, as far uh, as I know personally, his achievements were very much remarkable, I, was, I would say, because uh, from Aligarh Muslim University, and all his research work, or during our research work, actually we discussed everything. So I, I know him personally and how he evolved as a researcher. From high technology, and during our MSc, now he is doing, you know, into culture. And uh, uh, research work actually are studied by most of the researchers. And my part of my technology is also from him. Because I just thought about this people on WhatsApp and whenever I got a chance. So, without further ado, I have a brief introduction of Dr. Ahmad. So, I will read it out. So, Dr. Dishan Ahmad is an assistant professor at Bamboo Research Institute of Nanjung Forest University in Nanjung, China. He has more than eight years of experience in plant biotechnology and tissue culture. Uh, in 2018, he received his PhD degree from Aligarh Muslim University in India. He then joined Bembo Gene Development Laboratory at Nanjung Forestry University as a postdoctoral for three years. After completing his postdoc as an assistant professor, during his postdoctoral period, he was awarded uh, the title of Excellent Postdoctoral Fellow by the same university for its research work on tissue culture. He is currently working on research project funded by Chinese government on Bembo tissue culture and genetic transformation. So during his PhD, he worked as a junior research fellow on a project funded by BSc India. He also qualified various uh, national level talent uh, exams conducted by suppose CSR, NET, JRF, India, uh, then agriculture, SRV, NET, na, agriculture, uh, research Institute and he has published uh, over more than 25 research articles, 14 book chapters and also edited <coughs> recently actually he edited a, a very good Springer book on plant tissue culture and basically it's kind of uh, protocol based means we can also learn lots of protocols from that book only. So uh, there I will request him to share those PDF of those books at, with the participants so that uh, we can learn the basic protocols. Then he has, uh, he has been guest editor of plants. Basically, he actually uh, worked under or worked with many journals, reputed journals, I would say, uh, like Plants, Horticulture, plant, Frontiers in Plant Science, review many journals like Industrial Crop Research, Frontier in Plant Science, Scientific Reports, journals of MDPI, etc. I mean, all those journals are very much reputed in our field, actually, uh, plant science. And many a times, uh, I also recommend him for as a reviewer for our submitted papers. So. Uh, I hope all of us, uh, with this uh, special talk on plant tissue culture, we will uh, get lots of knowledge. And one thing I will request him, since our audience mostly here, as far as I know in Bahana College, we are mostly uh, graduate students. So uh, I will ask him that uh, the talk must be uh, you uh, must be on the basics. Means suppose someone wants to start a tissue culture lab, or someone wants to start a tissue culture on bamboo since bamboo is very much famous for diversity is very high in Bahona area. So the basic understanding because we have two lab assistants also here of biotech hub 
so we will get that knowledge uh, clearly and also he will discuss about his research work or current research work and now i think he is uh, starting a research work in do china funded by uh, both the government which is a very big research project and i uh, i expect some part of it because recently we discussed about it so i expect some part of both research work uh, he may collaborate with us in bahona college barteka because we are very much into this tissue culture of bamboo and his specialization is also in bamboo so this indo china project i am also looking forward to it uh, uh, over to our jakaria he was also my student i very, i am very much happy he joined uh, bahona college such a prestigious or such a nice instrument i said and on behalf of uh, or as a former uh, means uh, employee or former assistant professor of uh, bahona college uh, i welcome dr ahmed uh, and invite him to give his lecture over to jakaria thank you sir now i request uh, dr jisan ahmed sir to start his session sir you can start okay uh, thank you so uh, okay so uh, uh, dear uh, principal and teachers and uh, dear my students a uh, very good afternoon am i audible rafi yes sir yes yes okay so uh, here i am going to present a topic uh, uh, it's uh, the title is from lab to landscape advancement in bamboo tissue culture so basically uh, as uh, a little introduction because uh, i already taking a lot of time so just i want to say that uh, i am uh, dr jishan ahmed and here i am uh, assistant professor at bamboo research institute in nagpur forest university so uh, first of all thank you all guys for giving me this opportunity to present this work so today presentation is about to uh, the bamboo tissue culture so and the title of the my presentation is the from lab to landscape uh, advancement in bamboo tissue culture technology so uh, can you move to the next two? next slide so the topic of my content to is uh, introduction to uh, uh, that introduction to the plant tissue culture that is the that should be the part 1 and do uh, the second part which uh, will be the steps and regeneration of the tissue culture the second and do uh, the third part will be the genetic transformation in ma bamboo and the fourth part will be uh, bamboo commercial application and career options so the total my presentation will be consist of four part and uh, we will discuss the all about the basic of plant tissue cultures and uh, along with this we will also discuss with the genetic transformation and do uh, and along with this we will uh, see the commercial application and what are the career option in the uh, bamboo tissue culture next can you move to the next rafi so the part one is uh, introduction to plant tissue culture basically uh, if you talk about the tissue culture so as the name suggests that is uh, uh, widely for in vitro culture of cells uh, tissue as well as organ it means so uh, you are culturing a tissue and if you are culturing the tissue of plant then that should be the plant tissue culture that is a technique of growing plant cells so organ seeds or other plant parts in a sterile environment on the nutrient medium so if the basics of plant tissue culture if we take so we have a uh, two problem that will be solved by the plant tissue culture for example the first one is to keep the plant and organs uh, uh, from uh, to away from the microbes and second one we can improve the a uh, desired a desirable development in the cells and organs by providing a suitable nutrient media and other environmental condition so uh, this uh, uh, these are the basic uh, uh, you can say the definition plant tissue culture you are if you are culturing the plant cells so that that will comes under the plant tissue culture next move to the next so if you talking about the history of plant tissue culture uh, okay so uh, that is uh, basically uh, what condition do plant cells need to multiply in vitro so uh, basically tissue culture has several critical requirement for example appropriate tissue selection of appropriate tissue or uh, explant or you can say the second requirement a suitable growth medium or, and the third one the aseptic or sterile condition 
similarly the growth regulators and uh, frequent uh, subculturing okay next okay so uh, if you uh, talk about the appropriate tissue or explant so it means uh, uh, the explant is very important part because we will start the uh, tissue culture from this and so explant may be any cell tissue or organ of plant that is used to start in vitro culture and uh, most commonly it is uh, axillary birds and meristem and uh, to uh, the expert the explant must be sterilized to remove the microbial contaminant so in figure you can see the we have selected the explant for example you can uh, you can take the shoot tip or nodal segment or you can take the leaf tip so these are the most favorable explant that we can utilize for the start of tissue culture so the most important thing the selected explant must be sterilized so for the sterilization we should have uh, different chemicals for examples we have bromine water we have calcium hypochlorite we have hydrogen peroxide similarly we have mercury chloride sodium hypochlorite and antibiotics so these are the some basic chemicals you people know that you are uh, in the and dr rafil amin dashar told me that we have that they have established two tissue culture labs so these are the basic uh, chemicals that we can have in our lab just to sterilize the explant so concentration and what are the duration of treatment that is also given in the list so and selection of the explant for example should be the nodal segments your leaf tips these are the favorite uh, plant part that we are using or we can use for the uh, plant tissue culture either in the case of bamboo or other plant species okay next next to dr rafi please go to the next slide okay so here uh, if you uh, talk about the growth regulators so uh, in the tissue culture so growth regulators so for example uh, because we need to provide the proper nutrient medium so these nutrient medium consist of different to of a different concentration of phytohormone or growth regulators as the name suggests that is growth regulators means they are regulating the growth growth of the plant or plant tissue or plant cells so we have some favorite growth regulator as you all know we as you all are aware with the different names of this growth regulator for example auxin cytokinin abscisic acid and zebralin so these uh, plant hormone uh, we if you go if you talk about the growth so either they can promote the growth that they will come under the growth promoter and if either they can inhibit the growth so they will come under the growth inhibitors so growth promoter the favorite growth promoter that we use in the plant tissue culture that are auxin zebralin cyto cytokinin and and salicylic acid similarly if you talking about the growth inhibitor so these are ethylene and ethylene jasmonic acid and abscisic acid so these are the growth inhibitor so uh, these are the natural growth promoters and inhibitor that found in the plant so on the and the, if you talk about the function for example if you take the auxin that is auxin is a use as a growth promoter so of what auxin did that that it induces the cell division cell elongation swelling of the tissue formation of the cartilage formation of the adventitious roots along and the favorite to uh, you can say the natural auxin that are exist in the plant that are the 24d na ia iba and pca similarly we have some cytokinin for example for the shoot induction cell division so the example of cytokinin that are the pa kinetin and zg similarly we have uh, some uh, uh, plant hormones that like to cyprelin and abscisic acid so along with these uh, these natural growth promoters and inhibitors we have also the synthetic plant hormone that are the naa 24d and 245245t so na basically that is belongs to the cytokinin uh, cytokinin family and similarly we have 24d that are the synthetic or phyto hormone that use uh, for the basically the callus induction so these are the basic like the growth promoters or growth inhibitors the phyto hormone that we are use that we can use in the tissue culture okay next 
next slide Rafi. okay so uh, if you uh, we go through the part second that is the steps and regeneration so uh, step and regeneration if you talk about the steps of uh, steps uh, regeneration of micro propagation so these uh, micro propagation steps involve with the total five step and the first one is the initiation of the culture you can see in the feed the first step in the in that case we selected the explant and that explant we taking from the plant and that to uh, uh, we have taken from here the leaf as an explant and leaf is uh, leaf were cut into the small pieces and these small pieces were inoculated on the nutrient medium. So the, that green part we are showing here that is the nutrient medium. That nutrient medium is consists of different nutritious hormones, phytohormones and other uh, other uh, nutrient uh, nutrient. Uh, uh, nutrient compositions and these uh, finally this uh, this leaf this are the responsible for making the different type of callus and these callus uh, multiply and divide multiplied and make the uh, mass of the mass of the cells so overall if you're talking about the stages of micropropagation so this can be divided into the five stages the initial one the the first one is the initial of initial stage. The second was the second is the multiplication stage. After the multiplication, we have shoot formation and root formation that will be divided that will be as a third or fourth stage and final stage that is the acclimatization that will be the fifth stage. So total the micro propagation generally or naturally that is divided into the total five stages and these five stages are very different and uh, these five uh, these five steps require to uh, uh, each stage has its own demand and they require to different nutrient composition for example for the initiation of initiation of the culture we have different demand of phytohormone for the for the making of shoot we have different demand and for the making of roots we have different demand and similarly after getting the whole plant we have to transfer the whole plant to the uh, to the to the pot just the process is known as acclimatization so one by one we will discuss uh, all the steps so how these things will be managed okay so these are the basic just to introduce the what are the stages of micro propagation so we have to deal the each each one each steps so one by one okay come to the next okay so uh, before going to the uh, stages of micro propagation we have some terms for example plant regeneration so that is very interesting to know that why we are saying the generation and regeneration so regeneration as the term suggest we are going to make the plant or we are going to make the regenerate the plant so that is why that is a plant regeneration so plant regeneration you all people know that the process of growing an entire plant from a single cell or group of cells so that is possible because the plant cells can be made totipotent using hormone if you uh, go through in our uh, in my uh, previous or uh, initial slides we have uh, some history of the tissue culture that we skipped that uh, that was the habit lag that responsible and you gave the concept of totipotency so totipotency is the character of that concept or you can say the uh, character of a plant cell that can grow in a new plant that can grow in the whole plant so totipotency is the basic needs for uh, any plant cell just to make the new plant so plant reach that is why we are using the term regeneration because we have to create the new plant from uh, an old x plant so this, this regeneration type can be divided into two modes and that is the organogenesis and somatic embryogenesis. So organogenesis, either the directly formation of the shoots or roots, or organogenesis as the name suggests is the form, genesis of organs. So these organs are either maybe the root, either maybe the shoot. So these the for is a shoot and root formation or complete planted formation that to, that belong to the organogenesis synthesis. and similarly if you are talking about the somatic embryogenesis so new plants are formed from the somatic embryo so these are the basic mode of plant regeneration that we will uh, organogenesis and somatic embryogenesis both have good different mode of uh, formation of new plant we will discuss one by one what is organogenesis and what is somatic embryogenesis what are the difference between these organogenesis and somatic embryogenesis and what are the types of organogenesis and what are the types of the somatic embryogenesis especially we will take the example of bamboo because we are discussing about the bamboo so we will we will take the example of bamboo for the organogenesis and somatic embryogenesis and what are the research recently going on for the propagation or the propagation for the bamboo species okay next next slide Prati. okay so these are uh, some uh, i okay 
okay so uh, organogenesis for example you can see in the figure that we have a plant and we have taken the leaf ex plant and now we cut it the leaf ex plant and transfer to the tube you can see the tube and in within the tube that is uh, that part is the growing medium so that medium is consist of phytohormone vitamins and other in organic nutrient just to nourish the growing ex plant so uh, you can see the green part the cutted green part that are inoculated on the medium and that to medium uh, will nourish the growing ex plant so this ex plant now can go to go to make the whole plant either shoot and root so you can see in the figure either it can make to directly to the whole plant or either it can make to the one extra step that is the callus formation so in the case of organogenesis we have two mode that is either it will form a shoot and root directly or either it will form shoot and root with the mode of callus formation so in this case you can see the figure that is the callus formation so that is why organogenesis can be divided into two part either direct or indirect so there is a, a major difference between two that organogenesis either if it will goes directly to the formation of shoot bud induction that will be direct organogenesis and it if it will goes with the uh, via the callus formation that will be the indirect organogenesis in both the mode after the complete shoot bud induction the shoot bud induction we will transfer this shoots to the another nutrient medium that will promote the rooting of the that 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 shoots so rooting medium require different kind of phytohormone for example you have to we have to use the auxins and other other in combination so for the making of roots so these uh, hormones are uh, this combination of cytokinin and auxin hormones will make the complete planted and this complete planted will be transferred to the new uh, will be transferred or acclimatized to the pot and after after the acclimatization we will get our new plant so that is that is the basic uh, representation of organogenesis in which we have uh, shows the mode of uh, mode of differentiation either it will be takes this directly or indirectly okay next slide Uh, okay wait so that is direct organogenesis that is a part of our research for example we have seen uh, we have shown here that to bambusa balqua uh, that is the species of bamboo you can see in the figure that is the figure a we have selected the segments and uh, we have uh, just provided the nutrient medium that for the consist of da and kinetin that are the two most favorable cytokinin that are responsible for the organogenesis then we have taken you can see in the figure c the shoot from the shoot but the shoot started to rise and finally if after the c after the figure c you can see that to that to that to shoot but started to multiply and then after multiplication we will transfer to the whole culture to the rooting medium so rooting medium it means that will promote to make the root to the shoots so in this way from a single nodal ex plant we can take we can make the number of plants so that is that is the magic of tissue culture you can say because uh, from the in tissue culture we have we have targeted to make the mass uh, to make the plants at the mass level so to make the plants in such a way we will initiate with the very small and tiny single ex plants and from ex plants we just modify the nutrient medium sometimes we have given the a uh, pa or cytokinin and sometimes we have given to the oxy to make the root and finally you can say from you can compare the figure a and figure uh, figure e that is the from single nodal segment we have uh, get the a lot of plants so that is one of the example in papusa balqua that is the species that we have initiated the culture by using the cytokinin for the shoot shoot multiplication and similarly for the root induction we have uh, used the ms medium with the different auxin that is id8 so that is direct organogenesis in the case of bambusa and similarly next slide please next okay that is uh, indirect organogenesis that is uh, published uh, uh, okay so uh, that is uh, direct to uh, plant regeneration from the shoot tips of b hamiltonite 
that we have in the figure here, you can see the we have taken the shoot tip. Uh, we have taken the shoot tip, and from that we uh, we found that to callus induction takes place. That is the slide that representing the indirect carbonogenesis. So in figure A, we have taken the uh, shoot tip, and from the shoot tip, we provided the auxin just to make the callus. So these auxin, and you can see that this auxin formation here. And this promote the callus formation. This callus make the mass of the cell, and finally this mass of the cell started differentiating, and they make the shoot buds. So in the, from the shoot buds, you are seeing that number of multiplication takes place, and finally after the getting this multiplication, you found that to be transferred it onto the rooting media. In figure eight, you can see that is the formation of the root. So rooting media that I already told that to, these required the auxin, and we provide. I did auxin for the making of root, and finally, when we get the complete platelets, we just take out from the tube and transfer to the pot. So that is the acclimatized plant in the last figure. You can say so that is the uh, plant planted regeneration in the another species of bamboo, Dendrocanemus hamiltoni, that to, that are one of the uh, famous bamboo along with the mosso. We can see in the China also. We can see the microcubation of this plant that is uh, in India also. Okay, next slide. next slide okay so now uh, we will uh, talk about the somatic uh, embryo uh, that is uh, okay so we have to discuss uh, some uh, because we are uh, dealing with the organogenesis so either it is direct or indirect now we have to discuss with the uh, we either as i already told you that to uh, somatic embryogenesis so before going with the detail of somatic embryogenesis we have some uh, 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 we have to de deal with the base, uh, basics of embryo formation for example you as you already know that uh, uh, embryos can be of two types zygotic embryos or non zygotic embryos so zygotic embryos are those are formed by the zygote or other the fertilized egg similarly non zygotic embryo are formed by the cells other than the zygote so non zygotic embryo can be divided into three parts and that is the somatic embryos and androgenic embryos and parthenocarpic embryos there is a slightly difference, slightly difference in these embryos for example if we talking about the somatic embryos so these somatic embryos form formed by the sporophytic cells in an in vitro scenario and similarly if you talk about the androgenic embryo that are formed by the male gametophyte and if you talking about the parthenocarpic embryo these kind of embryo are formed by the unfertilized egg so somatic we will uh, take you know, consider the somatic embryo because these uh, because we need to deal with the somatic embryogenesis in the case of bamboo so basis or uh, basic of uh, somatic embryos are those that are formed by the sporophytic cells in an in vitro scenario that is or you can say that are the non zygotic embryos next Next slide, Rafi. Okay, so uh, somatic embryogenesis uh, is an artificial process in which you. Okay, uh, stages of embryogenesis. If you talk about the stages of embryogenesis, that is the induction. Uh, that is uh, consists of three stages. That is the induction and development and maturation, and similarly is germination and conversion. So uh, somatic embryogenesis, as you all know, that uh, basically the for. formation uh, basically the steps involve uh, the development of somatic embryos so the development and stages of somatic embryos are consist of four, four that is one is globular stage the second one is the heart stage and the third one is the torpedo shaped stage and the fourth one is the mature stage so globular stage uh, that is uh, uh, you all know that is the spherical shape embryo is small and round or the multicellular and similarly heart stage uh, that is the bilateral symmetry shape changes to heart shape with more cotyledon development and similarly the torpedo shaped stage consists of initial cells for the shoots and roots meristem similarly the mature stage these embryo become cylindrical so uh, in somatic in somatic embryogenesis so embryo has to transform internally and externally either in the case of its structural or morphological texture or internal cellular condition so these stages we all are aware with the this embryonic stages that we can see in the in the case of plant that or consist of four stages globular heart shaped torpedo and mature stage okay come to the next slide 
so these are the stages of somatic immunogenesis as you remember in the very beginning of the you can say graduation uh, graduation syllabus that we have a topic of somatic immunogenesis you can see the from a single somatic cells there is cellular division takes place and this cellular division leading to the formation of at the end the linear cotyledonal stage or you can say the mature embryo so these are these are the development that will lead somatic cell there will be a cell division and that cell division at different stages leading to the a different cell stage and finally we have we have our a globular stage in the figure you can say and that globular stage will be it can be divided into early globular mid globular and transition stage and finally this globular stage uh, converted into the heart sheep stage and this heart sheep stage will be converted to the cotyledon stage so these uh, stages uh, you can uh, we can see in the tissue culture or we can see in the development if you if you we are culturing any tissue that will go for the somatic embryogenesis to the formation of uh, the mature embryo will only takes place by the formation by the these previous stages either these previous stages uh, will leading to the globular globular to torpedo globular to a uh, torpedo and heart uh, heart shape and, and then after the torpedo stage okay uh, next slide uh, rafi uh, next slide okay Uh, so we have some uh, concept to regarding the direct somatic embryogenesis uh, so in direct somatic embryogenesis the embryos are formed directly from a cell or a small group of cell without the production of an intervening callus that is uh, common among uh, reproductive tissue and uh, it is rare in comparison with the indirect somatic embryogenesis so just like uh, direct organogenesis and direct uh, or indirect organogenesis similarly we have uh, direct somatic embryogenesis and indirect somatic embryogenesis so direct somatic uh, uh, somatic embryogenesis is common in different plant for example coffee plant and dacus carota and and uh, other uh, plant species so uh, the explant that is most favorable for giving direct somatic embryos are you can see the leaves and hypocotyl section and nucellus and embryo cell although the direct somatic embryos is very critical it is uh, really critical you can say it is uh, not easy to get the direct somatic embryos so, so so that is why that is the restricted stage in plant tissue culture because we are, in, in in case of bamboo also we cannot get the direct somatic embryogenesis embryogenesis so that is the that is why that there is very restricted example of direct somatic embryogenesis so similarly uh, next slide dr rafi indirect somatic embryogenesis so the same uh, concept like for the indirect organogenesis we have also the indirect somatic embryogenesis that will lead to the formation of somatic embryos uh, with the, the formation of the callus so indirect somatic embryogenesis that to uh, callus is first produced from the explant so embryos can then be produced from the callus tissue or from cell suspension produced from the cell so uh, in majority of cases so embryogenesis will take place the formation of callus so that is uh, uh, that is common you can say either in the case of species of bamboo either in the case of medicinal plants or either in the case of other plant species so indirect getting indirect somatic embryo uh, in getting uh, indirect somatic embryos that is uh, compared to the direct that is easy and uh, we have uh, several protocol for that uh, to 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 get the indirect somatic embryos okay move to the next next slide rafi so that is a very uh, initial experiment uh, that was uh, okay so there is a, a somatic embryogenesis uh, that you we can see in the pamposa verticosa in uh, in that to uh, figure you can see that we have uh, embryo embryogenic callus uh, that is we get from the stem segment in the figure we, we use the stem segment and uh, that to uh, formation of callus uh, due to the nutrient to uh, nutrient region that we use is uh, the ms that we supplied the va so the hormone va uh, basically 
here in the case of bambusa we use the hormone be a normal case normally we use the uh, oxy but here we applied the cytokinin just to get the calcium it also depend upon the plant behavior and plant species so just to and do for, you can see the figure b just to uh, after the getting the initial callus we transfer to that to initial callus to the 24d and kinetin supplemented media so 24d and kinetin supplemented media promote the multiplication of this callus before for the initial we use the ba but to, for the multiplication we use the ms and 24d plus kinetin and this uh, embryonic callus uh, or uh, started germinating as you can see in the figure d and finally i'm uh, sorry as you can see in the figure c that we have uh, this uh, somatic embryo induction and finally these uh, induction will lead to the shoot induction and this shoot induction is started to multiply and uh, finally at the end we got our uh, established plant so that is also somatic embryo genesis so the, that is report was published in the 2011 that is a very initial work in the bambusa verticosa okay next another example of uh, somatic embryogenesis uh, that is from the young inflorescence of dendrocalamus asper uh, the same but uh, here we use the explant uh, not to root or shoot or ni neither uh, nodal segment we use the inflorescence part so this inflorescence part the same we have uh, used and provide the oxy medium just to induce the callusing and the formation of this uh, formation of the uh, this callus will lead to the formation of uh, platelets and finally we transfer it to the rooting media and this rooting media will, uh, will support the formation of roots and uh, and then after the complete platelet is transferred to the transfer to the acclimatized to the new pod so that is uh, another example of uh, somatic embryogenesis that uh, by using the young inflorescence that we uh, reported in the dendrocalamus as per okay next next slide so there is a minor difference between uh, indirect to somatic embryogenesis okay a factor associated in somatic embryogenesis uh, uh, <coughs> so in direct somatic embryogenesis and direct somatic embryogenesis there is a difference as you, as you can see in the process that to uh, indirect somatic embryogenesis leading to the uh, uh indirect somatic embryogenesis that is uh, leading to the formation of a uh, new plant but uh, meanwhile we have a extra step that is the callus induction and that to uh, callus induction will lead to the embryo formation and that embryo formation will lead to the formation of shoots and while in the case of direct somatic embryogenesis we do not uh, have any callus formation so and that we that to uh, directly we have shoot regeneration so that is uh, the basic difference of indirect embryogenesis and direct embryogenesis because in indirect embryogenesis we have the callus induction so th this slide just to show the what is the basic difference between the direct and indirect somatic embryogenesis okay next slide so these are the factors uh, in somatic embryogenesis for example media components so 50% media components is also one of the factor just to uh, determine the embryogenesis and for example light temperature or you can say the light intensity and particular wavelength photo periods and these are the some factors that uh, that is uh, uh, responsible for the deciding the fate of somatic embryogenesis next other factors so uh, affecting somatic embryogenesis like explant so uh, selection of the explant is also important for example various type of explant used like uh, immature zygotic embryos inflorescence or similarly petioles protoplasts leaf stem and uh, roots so basically i want to say that uh, for the uh, for the getting the somatic embryos the explant selection is also one of the uh, criteria for successful embryogenesis so the process of embryogenesis uh, is also depend upon the selection of the explant uh, uh, apart from the selection of the nutrient medium okay next along with this the second factor the of course the plant growth regulators what kind of oxygen we are using for example 24d has been the best synthetic oxygen used for inducing somatic embryos 
so continuous supply of auxin causes embryonic cells to divide or to proliferate and uh, these are the basic uh, auxin for example 240 that we use initially for any explant although other than auxin has been also reported for some plant species while in the case of bamboo we use 240 for initial induction of callus so then if you get the callus uh, after the getting the callus we can transfer the the callus or mass of callus for the embryoid generating medium and then we can make uh, then after we can transfer it to the shooting and rooting medium and followed by the complete platelet okay next other than auxin uh, we have cytokinin zibrelin abscisic acid these are also phytohormone that are deciding factor uh cytokinin uh, basically uh, ba as you know the one of the famous phytohormone that we use for the uh, for the differentiation of embryos so 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 these uh, these are the things that we can uh, consider during the uh, during the embryogenesis okay next next Okay, so uh, these are the advantages of somatic embryogenesis and disadvantages of somatic embryogenesis. Okay, for example, uh, so uh, advantages of somatic embryogenesis, for example, that is useful in the physiological study, artificial seed formation, transformation of economic plant, plant, and similarly, plantlet production in large number of commercialization and embryogenesis can be continuous for an and give rise to secondary or more time. Or uh, disadvantage that to we have a lot of possibility of having soma clonal variation. Next. So part third to uh, advanced bamboo biotechnology genetic transformation. Uh, we will see genetic transformation in one of the important species of bamboo. Okay, come to the next. So uh, next slide, Rafi. Come to the next. So genetic engineering technology has been successfully used in many plant species, but it's uh, limited in woody plant, especially in bamboos. or you can say it is limited in the monocots because we we have lot of protocols to of genetic transformation in the diaphod plants but it is limited in the monocots and especially in the case of bamboo but uh, the ma bamboo that is one of the bamboo species in china and india also is one of the most important bamboo species in asia and its gen uh, genetic improvement was largely restricted by the lack of an efficient regeneration and transformation method so for that uh, there is an established uh, genetic transformation protocol that we are going to discuss next next uh, okay so for the uh, genetic transformation uh, same we have to follow the tissue culture experiment before we have to establish the genetic transformation protocol so in ma bamboo you have we have selected the nodal segment and again we have made the callus and this callus we put on the callus induction media and then after the callus induction media we can put on the multiplication media and then uh, we obtain our plant so at this stage uh, come to the next therapy so at this stage uh, uh, for agrobacterium uh, transformation we have to obtain the uh, we have to obtain the required callus induction stage so after that we will uh, we will uh, after the getting the plant we will inject with the agrobacterium as you can see this established protocol that is already published in the frontier in plant science where they establish this protocol for the genetic transformation and uh, just to they also got the uh, they also got the uh, we also got the transform plan by the successful by the stability uh, successful uh, successful method of transformation because that is the you can say the first report in the case of food bank first of, uh, first report you can say at the larger scale first report of the genetic transformation that is uh, well established and that is already published in the frontier so uh, okay next slide rafi come to the next so that is uh, bamboo commercial application uh, as you all know that uh, the bamboo is the multi purpose plant uh, you can use it bamboo for the building and well food and paper and pulp textiles along with this uh, the bamboo also used in the phyto remediation of heavy metal or you can say the bamboo 
because its nutritional value it can use in the food industry so uh, that is multi purpose and we have the, we can use the bamboo as the replacement of plastic that is plastic are not good for our environment so we can use these bamboo products for the plastic so that in one slide just i want to show that how bamboo is useful so you all are aware with this bamboo plants so uh, we 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 have some discussion regarding its commercial application in in, in our next slides so come to the next slide rabi so first of all the market demand uh, just to this slide to show the market demand uh, of the bamboo in india for example uh, uh, for example in the in the area of timber substitution bamboo bamboo mat and similarly plywood and other uh, or you can say furniture furniture and pulp industry so these are the market demands and these are the market value that uh, we can see uh, see bam we can see the bamboo as a commercial uh, for the commercialization so that is not in india but we uh, also we can see this double to triple market demand in, in the case of china also so just to just to brief here that to how the bamboo is demanding okay come to the next so uh, that is the basic uh, i have shown ki that uh, uh, how the uh, where uh, all over the world where the bamboos are grow for example uh in asia of course in asia most of the part of the asia the bamboo grows and basically if you talk about the asia so india and china china has the highest biodiversity with uh, more than 500 species and similarly up then after the india so in in asia india and china has the highest biodiversity and come to the next topic okay next so this uh, just to show that to uh, how the bamboo based industry in manipur enterprises in the case of that to uh, home appliances or you can say the other party and and uh, or you can say that to uh, bamboo for the construction move to the next step okay uh this is one of all uh, for the construction that is the bamboo project is going on in the china just to show the figure that how important is bamboo so they are using for the construction and uh, for the building materials similarly next next to the fee uh that to uh, we can see in the uh, this like uh, chinese pavilion or that is chinese university of hong kong or uh bamboo craft villages so these are the uses of bamboo that uh, we can see in china and as well as in india okay next so these are the basic career option uh, for the if you are dealing with the bamboo for example research scientist or you can be a biotechnologist or plant biotechnician or you can be a entrepreneur in agri business or you can be environmental consultant of course the research scientist just to explore innovative techniques for improving bamboo varieties or if you talking about the entrepreneurship because the lecture is related to that so that is also important so you can start a business focus on bamboo tissue culture and genetic transformation services supply genetically improved bamboo plants to nourishers and farmers and similarly if you want to be biotechnology biotechnician so you have to execute genetic transformation experiments and analyze the results and maintain and manage plant tissue culture facility so uh, next slide will be either you can be educator or professor or you can be plant breeder as you are aware uh, next slide so basic uh, conclusion you can see uh, uh, ptc has a lot of scope for producing mass number of bamboo species uh, genetic transformation techniques can help to improve the quality of bamboo uh, bamboo has several commercial application and can give rise to various career option for the candidate okay next so that is the reference book uh, i edited uh, and uh, uh, that you if you need uh, that is basically on the biotechnological advances in bamboo if you need pdf i can send to all the listeners or you can consult with the dr rafiul amindashkar for that pdf you need it is also available online okay next slide <clears throat> so i acknowledge uh, principal dr sumit dalia ipsc coordinator dr pankaj bora 
and Poetic Hub Coordinator Dr. Sangeeta Das for giving me this opportunity. Okay, and also the Bahama College, of course, I and the DBT uh, Department of Science and Technology. Next slide. Uh, that photo belongs to you. Probably you skipped that photo. Okay, and uh, this is my supervisor, Professor Yunong Ding, and my institution, Bamboo Research Institute. My, my uh, supervisor, uh, co supervisor, you can say the Professor Kyangi. Just uh, I am working under these two because they are the pioneer and they, are, they, are, they have great to record uh, in the case of bamboo and bamboo genetic transformation. Okay, come to the next. Uh, this is uh, our lab members. We have the lab of gene and development of bamboos. So these are the lab members you can see in the center. I am with my supervisor, Professor B. So these are the group that to all are working in the area of bamboo. Okay, come to the next. Thank you. Thank you so much sir for your meaningful session. We have learned a lot about the physiculture technique, selection of uh, explant and commercial uses of bamboo. I hope our participants have benefited from the session. Now the uh, now this time for interactive session. If anyone have queries, they can ask their question or they write in the chat box. Anyone have any queries? You can turn on your mics. Farsa, you can turn your mic. Yeah, my mic is on. No, sir. Sir, the participants. Sir. The participants can ask their queries. Yes, please. Take me later, we can tell you. Any of have any queries? I think few raised their hands, so you can ask them. I don't they can ask, I don't they can type. That will be good, you can they can type. Whatever the word. And uh, Ravi, if uh, the person needs the presentation, then uh, I can give the presentation because maybe the network issue we can go, we cannot go with the uh, smoothly as we want to go. So maybe we can skip some uh, information. So if the person needs the slides, so uh, you can share. Okay, sir. We'll okay. provide. Uh, because the slides itself is very informative, I think. There are lots of yes, yes. So. Yes, yes. So, so, so one thing, one thing, uh, I can ask uh, that uh, suppose this bamboo. As it's tree, na. So yes. Norm normally, we hear more about like uh, tissue culture of medicinal plants, na. Yes, yes, so yes. How, how, how this tissue culture of medicinal plants are different from means this tree plants, suppose bamboo, or which one? Yes. Is more economical means to start. As yes, as the, the, the yes, Rafi. The basic difference is the propagation of monocot and dicot. So this bamboo or comes under the category of these tree plant and monocot. So compared to the dicot, or you can say the medicinal plant, that is hard to propagate. So bamboo are hard to propagate. So we have to make a protocol according to this. For, for the tree species, we have some different criteria. We have different nutrient medium. We have different requirement. So we have to set to the protocols. We have to try different hormone, not like the medicinal plant. 
although the that to that to for example if you are using cytokine ea will work but what are the concentration and what combination it works we have to decide so it's all about the trial it's all about the repetition and then we will have a successful protocol yeah, okay yeah 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 because we lots lots of time we had about more about this medicinal plants secondary metabolites yes yes but uh, yes, yes. for this three plants for uh, this three plant i think it's more about my propagation there will be no yes, propagation uh, in or the case of three plants we 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 face a lot of infection so uh, we infection and sometimes we face the phenolic compounds that will comes out the from the explant to the medium so that is uh, a very uh, critical to uh, maintain the sterile environment of that culture we uh, so that is why that is hard to propagate so but to we have a successful protocol to propagate the tree species for the example if you talking about the bamboo so we in the lab we have established the protocol for the micro propagation of bamboo sa tutila one of the important species from the china so that is we have established so we have different protocol and for the different plant tree species different bamboo species have different protocols hai na you can say that so little bit uh, changes you have to follow without to we cannot to it i mean single protocol cannot be follow for the all the bamboo species i want to say this that means means we have to analyze the diversity of pahona first na what are the bamboo species available yeah, yeah. you have to you have to uh, you have to analyze and you have to go with the trial of the the different experiment for example if you are taking one bamboo plant from the bahana uh, areas so you have to try the nodal segment shoot tip explants and you have to try the leaf explants these three explants with a different hormones so and you have to calculate the what are the responses and percent of response so from the highest percent of response you will select okay this this explant is responding although you have to select the season in what month you are considering the explant it what month you are taking the explant that is also important so selection of the explants duration of the explants i to i mean you mean i mean to say that to you are taking the winter you are taking the summer so you have to select in this way so after that you can establish a basic protocol for the uh, to start the tissue culture yeah yeah that means means for uh, our college i think it will be easier if we uh, choose a species for which protocol already developed means otherwise it will uh, be i think it will be difficult to develop so you can you can you can adopt uh, any published protocol that is but a slighter modification is required as per your demand you can adopt the protocol for the initial experiment but you have to modify little bit uh, as per the your according to your results yeah 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 okay. mm. so over to other past participants if some queries are there or we we can proceed i think ma'am uh, any have, have any queries Thank you so much, sir. Then thank you very much. Thank you very much. Request, and uh, sir, I'm really sorry for any any inconvenience from yes, my sir. side because I think the network issue is a problem. So yes, <laughs> I'm sorry for that. No, sir. Now so, I some, somehow in, in in China the Google app is not working, oh, so we sir, have to yes, use sir. the VPN to run. Yes, that sir. is the is problem. Ben, yes. Because of that VPN only. Now yes, I am for yeah, yeah. I am yes, I am using with the VPN. Uh, yes, sir. So All Google services are banned in China. Sometimes yes. the connection will be okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now I request Miss Malika Borwa, Lab Assistant, Biotech Hub, Bahana College, to end the meeting with a formal vote of thanks. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thank you.
थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर सर बाय सर